good morning. Hello, Sharon Hurst here. Presumably you've all seen the book, have you? The Unicorns book? I'll try and get the, the shine off it. Um, I had such incredible fun doing that. I've put some pictures up here behind me so that you can see some of the original artwork and the size that it was because of course in the book they're, they're small aren't they? Um, love your work and your book. Thank you so much Sandra, that's kind of you. I, um, I just wondered if you'd like to see it, uh, the size that I actually created it because of course when you see them in the book they're lovely little pictures like this but of course the actual picture itself was this size and um, the, it's worth remembering if you're working and you're painting yourselves that the larger you can draw it and paint it the more detail you can get in there so if you're trying to do them the actual size in the book it would be a disaster you wouldn't be able to get that lovely detail in all right Good morning Sally, nice to see you. Glad you could join us. Welcome to my studio. Nice to see you. Yes, that's a hard lesson. So always, always up the size and you'll find that you can get the detail in there. And then when you take a photograph, it hones all that detail down into something so much smaller, of course and it looks stunning. So this is why it's quite important to, to work a little larger than you would maybe expect. So, oh, there's a heart, that's nice. Thank you very much, thank you. I'm wondering how many of you might have pens, how, how many of you use them. Oh, Andrea, hello. If you would like to leave me messages, whilst we're working, I'd be very grateful. Um, if you would like to leave us pictures that you've done yourself, we would love to see them. And of course that would put them up on this site, which would be fantastic. If you have any questions, my um, learned friend Monica is with me today from Search Press. She will be following along with the demonstration and answering whatever questions she can at the time and putting links up. But if you have any questions for me specifically, because I'm working, I'll miss them, I'm sure I will miss them. Don't despair, please leave them there and as soon as we're done, I shall grab a cup of coffee and I will work my way through all the questions and I promise I will answer you. So don't worry about it, just leave a question. And if you want to come and see more of the artwork and more of the things that are going along, just come over to the Facebook page, Sharon Hurst Art. And if you like that, you will be up to date with everything that's going on. You know, if we do this again, you'll be there. Okay, so just to let you know. Okay, how are we doing? So it's, it's 11 o'clock. Are you ready to rock and roll? Shall we... Uh, start this amazing journey through our own unicorn today. Okay, yes, so Search Press, Monica's saying, please send any pictures of your own unicorns because, you know, we'd love to see what you're up to. We really would. Okay, let's put the book down and I'm going to turn the camera around. So if that makes you feel a little bit strange, um, look away now, but I want you to see the work and I'm just going to turn the camera around, okay? So hold fire. Here we go. You're going round and round and round and I'm going to flip the camera so that you can see the board. I'm going to bring you in a little bit if I can, but not so much. That should do us. We've got a little bit of shading on the board. I'm sorry about that, but I wanted to put the lights on because the uh, lights aren't on this side of the house at the moment. The, the sunlight's not here yet. And to make sure that you can see everything that I'm doing, I just thought that I'd go this route first off. Okay. First of all, let me just have a little chat about the pens themselves. We're going to be using, I'm going to be using these. These are called Style File, and they come in 
small sets, large sets, as with everything else in life, it's a case of have what you like, really, and we never seem to have enough as artists, do we? I always want more. So I think my first, the first thing I would say to you is if you're ever considering treating yourself to any new equipment, go for as much of it as you can, because I've, I've got this horrible habit of buying a set of 12 or a set of 24, and then I'll end up having to buy this whole set again. And I did that with this because I just wanted more. But the first thing I want to show you, they, these pens are quite universal, whatever brand you're using. We've got to make sure that we're using a pen that is basically um, spirit-based. We don't want to be using watercolour for this particular episode, for, for this design that I'm going to do today. And these pens you'll find will come with a wide nib and with a fine nib. These are called Style File, and I like these. They're a good alternative. The brand leader, um, in my opinion, is Copic. But they're expensive, and I find that for a whole set of those, it hurts. Therefore, these will do me very nicely, thank you. They're not refillable, and they're not, um, you can't buy new nibs as you can with these but it's not the end of the world. The price means that I can use them with impunity and enjoy them. I wanted to show you the basic techniques that we're going to use. I'm going to talk about the paper in a minute, but first off, let's talk about the pens. The blending technique that we use today, you're generally looking for the numbers on the pens. You'll find that they're all numbered and we're looking for a difference, the same colour, but a difference in number. And so I have 640, 642 and 644. And that will make it easy for me to blend. And if I start with 640, so this is the paler one, and I come in here and I put the colour down. And then I go to 642 and I put that colour down, just overlapping a little, like that. They'll always look darker when they first go on the paper. And then I'm going to go to 644, and I put that down. We have the three shades, from light through to dark, but we do have lines in the diff where we've joined. What you do is you go back to the lighter colour, and you overwork the bridge. And then you go back to the middle colour, that's 642, and you will rework that bridge. And then I might want to go back to 642. And then I'm going to smooth this, so I go to the dark colour, so the 644. And then I go to the 642. And when that dries, that will give me a decent graded blend. Now, the first thing that we need to think about with that is that's been a lot of rubbing and a lot of working. And consequently, you really need to think about two things. It will bleed through, no matter what paper you use, it will bleed through. So always have some kind of backing. I usually work on my wooden board here, but always have some kind of safety net underneath. It will bleed through. Nothing you can do about that. It's the nature of the beast. And the other thing that's really, really critical and very, very crucial is the paper. Because I use this particular paper here. It's called Express It and it's blending card and it's specifically for this particular type of work. And I have tried tens of different types of blending card and marker card and I have to tell you I don't think anything, anything at all comes close to this. And again, it's, it's probably twice as much as some of the others 
but you will get, I promise you, you will get the result that you want. Because when you use some of the cheaper papers, they fluff. In some of them, you actually work all the way through them. You go through the paper as you're, as you're doing this blend. And that's just hopeless. And when you can't achieve what you want to achieve with your paper, it, you think it's you. And I'm telling you, it's not. It's very, very important in this particular discipline that you use the right card. Oh, trust me, trust me. Been there, done that, and cried in a corner. When I, when I was first given this, this project, I tried to use the paper and the card that I had at home and it wouldn't work and I thought that it was me and I was fit to turn around and say I can't do this because I don't know how and I watched um, YouTube and I went to the artists who use this stuff and they all suggested this and it's fabulous. Now the other thing I wanted to show you just as a couple of little tips. All of these sets come with a blender pen and the blender pen is just the the uh, spirit in the pen au naturel, no colour, you've still got the two different ends and these are quite interesting because you can use these to fade out. So if I come into this and I work my way through here, this pen will actually fade the colour out. So you can use that for highlights. If you make a mistake, as look, that's a little bit difficult to work at the moment because it's dried. You notice it's working better where it's wet. So it will work better on wet areas. And this is true of the blending, everything. It's better to get to it when it's damp. You'll also find that you don't get horrendous colour transfer onto this, which is quite interesting because that means I don't have to clean it before I go on to the next. It also means that if we just have a little bit of a fluffy edge moment, let's do this with wet colour, and I, oh, I've made a mistake. I can come in here and if you're careful with little areas, you can use this to remove some of your little fluffy mistakes. So if that was wet, I would be able to go in there and just tickle that and blend it and, and fade it out. That's really interesting. This will also give you some interesting backgrounds for skies. Paint your blue sky and then come in and put your clouds in with this. So effectively you're lifting them out, you're bleaching them out. So that's a good pen to have too. Good for blending too. All sorts of things. You will also find your own way with these. You'll find ways. Now given the fact that this works so well when it's wet, and it blends when it's wet. We're going to be outlining our um, neddy with a Sharpie pen. I'm using the ultra fine point and we'll be using this to come round our horse, our unicorn, and to give him a dark outline. When that's still damp like that, if I come into that with one of my coloured pens and I work over it and I use, a, and this will issue a lot of liquid onto the paper, you will find that it will make this bleed. So it's just a point to make. When we're working over areas, we've got to be careful how we do it. So work within an area just nudging up to the edges rather than colouring an area like this unless you're fast and quick. But to come in there and to scrub it, you'll find that this bleeds and this is very true of the unicorn that I painted here and I don't know whether you can see this, but around the horn here, I was stupid and I painted the whole thing with that golden pen and it's meant that this has bled. So it's just worth remembering that. So we'll think on that. But hey ho, you see this is now, it's bleached out. 
Can you see how that's bleached out and this is bleeding? And that's because this was too wet when I started to scrub with the next colour. So if you're very a bit dubious about that, what I would say to you, do what I did when I did my horses and my unicorns. I drew them out like that and then I put that away until the next day and I coloured them the next day. And it's just worth thinking about because it gave it a good chance to dry and then I wasn't panic stricken about how I dealt with it. Right, are you ready for this? Let's go for it. Let's move all these. That's him in the grey scale. So you should have all of these bits and pieces I believe Search Press put them up so that you can print them off and you can use them yourself. If you need them and you haven't got them, give me a shout on Facebook and we'll make sure that you're sorted. Okie dokie. So, what we're going to do, here's our paper. As I say, I'm sorry about the, um, the shadows, but I just wanted the light on this today so that you could see it. Pencil, rubber, and we're ready for the off. And horses, we're very lucky actually because they've got lots of lovely round circular knobbly bits and that makes it easy for us to draw. And the very first thing we're going to do, we're going to look at this and see this shape here. I'm going to think of that as an oval. All I want to do about here on my paper is draw an oval. I'm using, this is an HB pencil. Um, if you're worried about it marking your paper, use a, um, a 2B, it's softer, it's kinder. So that's, that's an option. So that's our first port of call. Then I'm thinking about this here, and that is like a rounded triangle, that whole shape. So the rounded triangle, I'm coming in from about here, and I want to come out and up like that, back down, round, and into there. Job done, that's that. And then I'm looking at this. So this is his, under his chin. And I'm coming from here, down and round, into there. There we are. So that's our first three marks on the page. If we then think about, I can put that there for now, I think, and I think you can see that okay. The next thing I'm going to look at is his ears. I think it's a he, might be a she, I don't know, it's up to you. And I'm going to just put those in as two triangles. And one of them is here on the ridge of this um, triangle here, I'm going to put this in up, a little bit curved, and then down just the other side there. And then over here, I, I'm thinking that's his eye, that's going to be his eye. So from about here, and not too much of a gap there, I'm going to come out here and put that out, and this up here. There we are, so that's that. Oh, lovely, my neighbour's just decided to cut the grass. Oh, I'm sorry, I hope you can't hear that. From the nose, this oval here, we need to put in this line up here so that we've got the bridge of his nose and we can see his eye. So just come from that area there and pull that up through there. That's all you need to do. And then if we look down here at the neck, down here, so this is probably just halfway along this area here. So halfway and just pull it down like that. All right. Next thing we want to do here is look at the top of the neck. And this comes from the ear. And I'm looking at a decent sized gap here for the neck. So I'm going to just pull that down, 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 through here. Okay. There we are. 
Good. We're getting there everywhere, everyone. I don't know where we're getting to, but we are getting there. Now, next thing we'll do, let's put the eyes in so that we can see where, how he's looking at us. And all we need to do is halfway down here, that, and then let's just give him an eyelid. So we're going back in there to do that. That's it. That's that eye, and all I want to do is just mark out where I want this bit of highlight, because if I don't put that in and I miss it, you'll lose the whole sparkle on the eye. So I'm just coming in there, and let's just do something like that, so that we know that's looking at us. Already we can see it's looking at us. And this eye is quite high up into this shape here, and it almost follows that shape. So. I'm going to come up and round like that, and then I'm going to make it a bit of a teardrop shape. All right, so there, it's like a whale. How about that, a whale without a tail? And then here, I'm not going straight across, I'm going to curve it slightly upwards so that we're looking, he, it makes him look down at us. And with this bit of eye to make it look real, instead of it joining there, I'm going to just curve it because that gives you the bulge of his eye. It just makes it look more realistic and more round and rotund, that's all. Okay. And because he's looking down at us, this particular eye, I want to give the impression of the white of the eye behind the iris. If, if he was looking straight at us, it would just be a lovely black eye. We all know horses, but I'm going to come in here and from there and down and around. I'm going to do that because then that gives you that stark light colour here that makes it look sort of surprising. And again, I'm just going to put a highlight in here so that I keep that clear. And immediately we can see he's looking at us magic. Good. It's just what we want. Right, let's put some nostrils in. And this is quite easy here, this shape here. What we're going to do is somewhere up here, now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking it's probably halfway along this shape. So up here halfway from here, I'm just going to draw out a bulge like that. That's all we're going to do. And then from here, from the same place, come in and up towards the face and then back out to there. So again, we've got this leaf shape. It's like a leaf, isn't it? Just there. That will do. Okay. Now, if we look at that and this and this, and I put a pencil line along there, this is just below the pencil line, and it's probably halfway between those, between his lid and here. Therefore, if I look at that through there, I know that it's going to be a little bit lower here. And I'm going to put my finger there, and then I'm going to do a kind of back to front question mark like that. All right. So let's just see how I've done that. Just a bit lower than that. And then I'm going to put in a number six. So through here, don't join it up, don't join it up. So come, up, come away from it like that. And then in, round, down, nice big shape, number six. And you have two nostrils. Job done, Bosch. Fabulous. Okay. Next thing we need to do, cheeky, cheeky smile, cheeky smile. And for that, that again, that's simple. Come just up from here, not quite a centimetre, so up from there, and a centimetre or so from here, there, and we're going to do a C. Okay, there we are. And all you're going to do from the middle of that here is this squiggly wormy shape, smile, 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 back up. And we have cheeky chappy smiling at us. Okay. 
Now for the next bit, I'm going to use a ruler because I have to tell you everybody, I'm a complete nut of dunce when it comes to straight lines. If I were to freehand this, he'd have a, a beautiful horn that was all on off kilter and all terribly weird and we're not going to do it. You and I are going to do it properly, all right? His horn would come from his forehead and it would be between the two eyes. So this is going to be somewhere here midpoint isn't it I reckon somewhere here and the bottom of it would be curved so we're back to that kind of C shape again and what I did for myself when I was thinking about how I was going to paint my unicorns and the perspective of it all and it was really complicated to start with I bought myself a little model I just bought a little child's model and using some blue tack, it's all terribly high tech in this household, I'm telling you. So using some blue tack, I stuck a horn on my little unicorn like this. And that means that when I look at it now, I can see the perspective of how that would be. So it helped me a great deal. And therefore, I know now that if I want to do this unicorn's horn, take a central line from the middle of here and just draw it to where we want to be, about there. And then I'm going to take that from the outside there, up to there, and then from this outside here, back up to there. And hopefully that will give us the right trajectory for our unicorn's form. So you've got to imagine that it comes from the middle of his forehead and it comes straight out from that point. That will do us. We've got to be happy with that because I think that we can work with that. And then the final um, stage of this is, is putting in all the pretty stuff really. Let's work our way around it gently. If we're doing this ear, I want to make this a little more rounded there. And we've got to bring in the inner curve of the ear, so that will do that, like that. So we've got this leaf shape to start with. And then I will be echoing that, I'll do it again, a little bit wider there, coming out and then into there. And then that gives us this edge to his ear. So that's fine, well done. And their ears don't actually come down into their heads straight into the heads like this. They've got this kink and they do that like cat's ears do. So that will be surplus. But what we will do is we've got to put this part of the ear here. So from halfway up, bit of a curve, bit of a curve and do that. And then that gives us the outer edge of the ear and this is the inside of the ear. So that's good. Next thing we want to do here, let's have a think about some of his mane. I want to give him a forelock here. So from here, let's just do the bottom line first. Up, curve it round the eye, come away from the eye, and then we're going to come out, down and round. So that's the underneath. So then get hold of it and come back the other way, up, over, go past that area there and up to here. And then that gives you this area of hair on his mane here. And then I want to just echo that with another little curvy kinky bit here, like that. And that tucks up underneath. This will all make sense when we draw it in in pen. For this side, we're going to get rid of all this difficult transitional area here with all these bits and pieces. We're going to do that just by adding another piece of mane down here like that. And then up through here, down, round and like that. And that will get rid of all this difficult stuff here. And this will take us away from this jaw area this big line through here. We're hiding things to make it easier to draw and to paint. Okay, that's what we're looking for. 
And if we go down the back of his neck, we're going to put a couple of centimetres from there, one area there. So that's a piece of hair that's going the other way over his back. And I want to put another piece there. And then we're going to do another there. And then from there, I want to come through, down and round. So again, I'm hiding his neck. I want to get rid of some of this, this long expanse of line. And then from here, I'm going to come out, in, out. Now I thought that we'd put um, a plait on because I wanted to show you how to do that. It's not as complicated as it looks. When you start first start trying to draw a plait, oh, it's so complicated. It isn't really. Start off with one line and then the other side of it too, like that. That's all you've got to do, start with. So that's the outer edges of the plait. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to work our way through the, the middle of it. All you've got to do is a zigzag down the middle. So like this, that, here you go, zigzag. Right, so a zigzag straight down the middle. And then all the other lines that we're going to do, we're going to point upwards. And you'll see what I mean. From every zig, where you've got the zag there, up, 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 and up, one side. And where we've got the zig on the other side, up, 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 and up. And lo and behold, you have a plait. Not complicated at all, not really, not really. Okay, next thing we're going to do here is He's got a flower in his hair. Look at that. There you go. So one petal, two petals, three petals, four, five potatoes, six potatoes. I know, I know. Then all we've got to do is one line. And then from here, two lines. And then another one up here. And they're going to be greenery ferns. He's looking at us from the front, so behind him, that will be the edge of his back. That will make sense when we start to paint it. We've drawn him. Well done, everybody. If you've been drawing along with me, pat yourself on the back right now. Right now, okay? And where we're going now, we're going to draw him out. I want to start with I'm going to start with the horn actually because I think that that's got to be right. And we're going to start with that there. All right, just that. I'm using my Sharpie. Good pen because of course when we go in later and we rub it out, it won't smudge and it won't smear. And now we're going to do S shapes. So from there, up and across the horn, and then outside the horn and back up. So look, S shape. Come back down to here, and you're going to do another S outside. Join up to that one, out again and in. S shape. So outside, across, join up, back in. Outside, get smaller as you come up outside like this and if you're ever tempted to paint seashells and for the top there that's all you've got to do job done if you're ever tempted to paint seashells that makes a fantastic seashell for you all you've got to do is just do the little opening here as an oval and you've got a fantastic seashell I don't know the name of that particular one but there you go okay Let's make sense of what we have here and what we need to actually draw to make it sensible. I want to make sure that I have his nostrils. So that, don't worry if you don't hit the lines, we're going to rub them out so it doesn't matter. And then we're going to do that, okay? We don't want that line there, but for sure we know we want that. 
okay? We don't want this across here. What I'm going to do now is bring that down there, round here, down through here, and then up to join to that. And then I'm going to put the mouth in. Okay. I need this bit of nose, so I will bring that up through there to there. And then that means I can come in here. I'm going to bulge that eye out just a little bit more to make it look interesting. And I'm going to bulge the eyelid a little bit here. And let's just make sure we keep that highlight. We really, really want to keep that highlight. So there you go. We've got that part of the face sorted. Let's go into this now. So that's the oval of the eye and the tear duct up round there. Tear duct, you can make that quite distinct there with a little line there. And I want to do this. And then I'm going to put my highlight in. So that's my eye sorted out. Yes. Let's do this for this bit of forelock next because that means that I can bring that round there. Do some of that. Don't worry about the edges because we can fluff those later anyway to, to make them hairy. And then the ear is simple, that little bit up through here to there, that up through there to here and round there. Lovely. Shall we do this bit of hair next because then that will make that make sense. We can see what we've got then. So I'm going to start my pen work here because where I put it down, usually it creates a blob. So if I start on a pen line, it won't make a mess. And I'm going to bring that down and round. And really, the secret to all of this is to keep your pen moving. If you stop, it will blob and it will give you a mark and it will jar. So just keep moving. Don't worry about the lines if, they're, if it's not absolutely perfect up, through and round. We're going to rub them out. Down round this little Neddy's chin, we just want to make sure that we've got the lines that we need for his jawline. So they're there. And then this one comes down and around here. And then we've got that there. I want to do his neck like this. That's his back. Let's do this ear now, so up to the point of the ear there. That's that strange little kink up and through. And then this line up, round, lovely and curved into there. We're going to put the line of his neck down here. And that really now only goes to this bit of hair. So as I said, start on a pen line, bring it down, run it through. I want to do that and that and that and then I'm going to pull that through down there, pull that through there. We'll start on the plait down round like that. Here's the zigzag like that and as I said Everything comes up like that, like this, okay. And then all we've got to worry about now is our flower, the petals, one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to flick out my greenery. So one, two, three. If you feel confident when you're at home doing this on your own without the pencil lines, I'd do that because then you're not worrying about rubbing out either. So I think I've got everything completed there and I really want to make sure now I've got lovely soft rubber. The best rubbers you can use are these plastic rubbers so that they don't leave you um, lots of scrubby, nasty lines on your paper. And I'm going to start around the face because here the um, ink has had the longest time to dry and therefore I'm hoping that I won't smudge or skid anything. There we are. Now I've drawn a bit hard on mine everybody because I wanted to make sure that you could see it. 
So I am going to land up with some pencil marks, but that's not the end of the world for today. All right, so don't, I'm not going to worry about that, don't you? But I don't want to, I didn't want to be painted, drawing lightly, and then you couldn't see what I was doing. That would have been very sort of self-destructive, wouldn't it, really? There we are. So I'm just getting rid of the majority of my pencil lines. And what doesn't go, I shall draw over and I shall make sure that I've got colour on them. So that's OK. So just come through there, pull that off. There we are. Sorry, I thought I was jiggling the camera about. I do apologise. And what I tend to do for myself here at home with pencil and rubbings is I use um, a nice big brush because I do feel that if I use lots of um, handwork on this and I brush it on a hot day, um, I can really, really land up with some nasty marks on my work. I don't want that really really don't want that so i'll use a brush it helps it helps but we can see now that we've got we've got a good basic drawing of the horse that we want magic okay pencil and the black pen can go away unless we want them later if you did decide you wanted a little lady horse you can always put lovely long eyelashes on that later so that's okay you can do that and I'm going to be looking now at my greys. So I've got a selection of grey pens. I'm going to get my um, blender pen out in case I make any mistakes. And I just want to gently, gently wipe something away. Well, you never know, do you? You never know. Not all perfect. And so I've got a good collection here of, of different coloured pens. These are um, W grey, that WG, which means warm grey. So I've got a two and I've got a four and I have a five and a seven. So I think I'm going to go two, four and seven. The four and five would probably be a bit too close. You wouldn't be able to see the difference here at home. So I'm just going to go for two, four and seven. And I'll go for the darker greys when I need them. And what we're thinking about doing here, everyone, is just laying in the basic lightest colour that it would be. And we're going to work in stages because the thing here is if it dries, it's difficult to go back in and to blend because the, the ink's dried. You need to be blending when it's still a bit damp, really. Therefore, if I take my number two, and I'm going to come into the face and I want to just put my number two over my horse's face. And as I said, I'm going to work areas like this to start with. Okay. Don't worry initially if you've got these lines on the work. Can you see it's light, dark, light, dark? It will dry Trust me, it will dry the same colour. So I'm going to come through and down and round. I'm going to leave that for a bit of highlight in a minute. If you're going over the lines like that, as I said, please skip through quite quickly. And I'm going to come down here, watch your edges. So just use the tip of the pen for that. Just leaving a few areas here that I want to keep light here. And a little bit there, make him look cheeky. So let's just do that bit of the face first. Okay. So whilst that's in my, I keep these in my hand, the side I'm using upwards, and I'm then going to go to the number four. And what I want to do with this is start thinking about the darker areas that I have. So in there and in here, I'm painting over the colour that I already have and I'm just making it darker. This is going to be dark, in fact that will be dark under the hair there too on his neck. So in there, dark, that's light. I'll put a 
bit dark in there. Missed a bit, look. Go back to that in a minute. Where his grin is, that will be dark on the other side of the grin, like that. And what we're going to do with that now is quickly, quickly come back in and you're going to use the lighter colour to soften all of those edges. So yeah, initially it's quite difficult to see what you've done and where you've been because it looks dark anyway. That's the spirit on the paper. But when it dries, that will soften up and it will blend away. So trust me, have patience, just hold on. In here, let's go in there. I want that to be darker. And then I'm going to come straight down the middle of his nose so that we've got shadow down there. And again, I'm going to so hold them in your hand like this so that you have colours. You're not having to keep picking them up and blend. Put it back and back. Next pen. See my black's bleeding a little bit there where I've, where I've scrubbed it for the colour. But that's just what happens, I'm sorry, but it is. As I say, leave it to dry, leave it a day and you'll find that that will make a difference. If I had been sensible, I could have done one, couldn't I? And in Blue Peter fashion, I could have had one waiting. Well, that would have been a sensible idea, wouldn't it? Huh. Amateurs, amateurs, darling. Okay, so we've got the dark down through here. We've done all that, let's go up into his ears. If you're worried about areas like this that might might land up a bit pale like that. Just come over it again. That's it. With the lighter colour. Soften it off again. And this is the key to this particular technique. You've got to keep going back. You have to keep going back. Reworking, retouching, reblending. Reblending? No such word, Sharon. Sounds good though, doesn't it? We know what we mean. So up through here, and then I'm going to add my darks. So this time I want to use the narrow side of my pen because I'm going to come in here and add that up through there. And I want to put the darker inside of his ear like this. which I will then blend, and I will blend that with the narrow side again. So this is the lighter colour. There we go. This might dry a little bit um, lined, so if you've got any fear about that, as we did above, oh, that's the dark one, you numpty. Here you go. Come in with the lighter pen and just blend over. That's all right, jolly good. Now let's do a bit on his neck so that we're up to date with that and we've got that where it needs to be. This is his jaw, isn't it? So let's come in there and offer up the pale grey in there and in here, like that. I'm going to come in under here. They're nice to use these pens. Um, the difference being that if you're working with these, they're a definite felt tip. Some of the other pens, like the Copics, are actually a brush and they're very, very nice to use, I have to confess. It's got a lovely feel to, to do this with a brush. But it doesn't matter, just use what you've got. I mean, if you are a watercolorist and you want to do this in watercolor, that's absolutely fine. I've gone over the edge there, not going to worry about it because of course I'm going to paint the mane in a, a darker brown anyway so it's not an issue but if I didn't want to do that I would nip in there quick with the um, just the blender pen and that would soften that up for me so you know we do have options here it's not the end of the world right so down through here quickly wing that down and through 
and then we can start adding some of our darker colour. This is the back to the warm grey four and what I want to do here that's dark in there because that's underneath his jaw. This is going to be very dark in there and as it goes down and round and under the corner under the edge it will be dark there as well. This would be dark down his neck too, so I'm coming in down there and making that dark grey. Before that all dries, let's nip in and just soften and blend. And have faith in the, in the pens, have faith. You'll get used to the way they blend and how they feel. And you'll get to know, you know, at what stage they will mark and they won't mark. So in here, this hair is going to give me quite a shadow up through here. The thing that puts a thing on a thing is the shadow that's under the thing. And that sounds like a white mouthful, but trust me, it really is true. Everything that is on something casts a shadow. And that is true of this horse's hair. Now, I know for a fact that I think that will mark. So what I'm going to do is just pull that paler colour down through like that so that I don't get a watermark. And I'm going to do something the same here. I'm just lifting that up and pulling it up a bit further and hoping that it won't kind of give me like I'd expect a watermark on a watercolour painting. This hair casts a shadow on his neck too. So again, the smaller little nips in there, like that. Okay. And again, smaller nib on this colour, and I'm going to blend away that too. Now, if I was at home and I was on my own, I would walk away from that and I would give it a chance to dry and um, to be clear so that I can come back to it and I can see it and then I won't get as much bleeding on my black. Now if you're concerned about that, don't black it out now. Do it later, do it afterwards. I mean that's the other option. You, could, you know, there's no right and wrong way of doing this. This is just the Shannon Hurst way, but it doesn't mean it's the right way to do it. So you find your own way to do it and to be comfortable with it. But we're rushing through this today so that I can get it done for you. But you take your time at home and give, give areas a chance to dry. You can see that's all still wet because it's so dark. But there are alternatives. If you allow it to dry between, then the colour, the ink, doesn't flood and, and won't make so many marks. I'm just going to put shadow up the middle of that part of his ear there. Just like that. I'm going to use the small point to blend away. So just get into the paper. And you see this is what I'm saying about the papers. Some of the papers when you get in there and you scratch like that it goes right through the paper. So all that work already has just gone to pop basically and it's really really depressing. So be, be warned. Try, try some different papers and see what you like best. I'm putting away the light one for now and I'm now going to go to the mid-tone and I'm going darker and this is the warm grey number seven and for this I think we'll use the small tip and you can see the difference immediately so if I go in there and I put my dark shadows in some of these areas that goes in and then I go back to the mid-tone and I blend with that now I want some in here. There we go. And you see, using this darker colour, some of these areas now I can get rid of the bleeding on the Sharpie pen because it will obliterate it, it will just hide it. But um, as I say, if it was me, I'd, I'd leave it to dry initially. Up and blend. And then we've got quite 
quite a bit of dark area in this ear, so I want to do that. Like that. And then I want to come down that edge and just snug that in there. So again, using the thick part of mid-tone blend. And blend. So we have that nice dark here. I want some dark in here. real dark in there like that I'd like to put that crease in his eye here where this we've got this crease at the bottom of his eye through there like that we're going to do that and then whilst we're still at it and this paper is still damp so I know that I can go in here with impunity and it's not going to it will blend very nicely so into here and then I want to put some dark in round under there. So we go back to the mid tone and soften that. Just softening the edges. Don't want them to be hard and sharp. And just come in and snuggle it up. And just gently, gently, gently smooth it away. And down here that and then we want to put some real dark down the center of his nose so this is where the blending technique really does come into it own. the paper is still damp so it's perfect for this so I come in and I put that dark down there and then with this one I come in and I do this again now that's a big blend and that one could could leave me with some marks. So if I'm in any way concerned about that, I'm going back to the light, this is the real light one, and I'm coming into the edges. I'm going to go over the whole thing like that. Again. And that will ease the whole thing and just take, give me a lovely smooth finish on all of it. I'm going to do that down there as well. So it might look like right dog's dinner at the moment, but trust me, it will come back to us and it will work. The nostrils, I want dark in there. So yes, if you're in any doubt, go back to the lighter colour and use the lighter colour as a blend for the whole lot again. And it does, it works. And this paper at the moment for me is, the amount of blending I'm doing is perfect because it's still damp, so it's still accepting the fact that I can move it around. It's like watercolour. If it's damp, it'll move. If I was to come away from this and that, let that dry, I would really, really have to scrub at that to get that to move again later. In fact, I think you'd struggle to do it. I want some real darks in here on the mane. So up here, where that hair divides, that would be really quite dark in there. Like that. So that's another big area. So if I was worried about that and, and landing up with a tide mark, come back to the light colour and just feed that in again, like that. It'll be gone. That will sort it, promise you, promise you. I want that dark in there, so smaller edge in there. Even darker. Even darker. Because it's your darks that make your lights look light, and your lights that make your darks look dark. As daft as that sounds, it really is a good, true adage. I've gone over the edge there, so potentially with the very light colour, come in and work it. And it pushes it back. There you go. So that's a lesson learned. So I've got my greys in. What I want to do now is take a really pale beige, 
So this is a 206 and it's a pale beige. It is that kind of colour. And with that, we're now going to lay a little bit of glazing in on top. There we go. So this is the colour I wanted to use for there. Like that. We can pull a bit up here, round his chin. Have a, if we put a little bit in like that, now go back to the light grey, the very light grey, and you can soften that in like that. And that gives you that gorgeous golden glow on his nose. So round here a little bit. Going to put some there. We've got it there. I wanted that colour there, like that. And we could drop some in on his ear, maybe there, and maybe a bit here. And if we go back to that pale, pale grey, we can use that to soften and to nudge and budge and smudge. So nudge it, budge it, and smudge it well-known firm of solicitors. One day somebody's going to turn around to me and say, oh I know somebody called that and I shall absolutely curl up. Here we go, I want to put dark in this nostril now. I want to come in here and we need to put some real dark in there, like that, and then in here. And we'll go back to the light grey and with this We'll soften that, like that, work it, work it, work it, soften it. Now that particular technique, because I've gone in with a much lighter colour there, it's several shades lighter, this is, this is number two and I used number seven. What I want to do now is demonstrate that in the eyes. So let's really do something quite clever in the eyes now. I want to use this very pale, pale colour. This is 202. Um, I want to just put that in. Because he's uh, although that would be the white of his eye, effectively, I don't want it to be too white. And look what we've missed, everybody. Look, we missed it. So that's the pale grey. And then if I go in with the number 7, just want to snuggle that in there for a bit of shadow. Okie dokie, back to the pale grey, just to soften. Okay. So that's the pale, that's the number two. And I'm going to go into his eyes and I want to do something a bit different with those eyes. I want to highlight. If I take this and I want a dark, a real dark. So this is the warm grey number nine, number nine. And I want to come in here and solidly, solidly block in his eyes, almost. That's around the highlight. And the only way to make that highlight stand out is to have dark all around it. So dark against light, light against dark. And then I'm stopping there, all right? And if I come now into the number two, the light grey, and I work that, so work the edge of that grey. Work it, work it, work it. And then that gives us that kind of blend into the lighter part of the eyeball, okay? The other way we can do that, let's do it a different way so that you can see how that works too. This side, if I come back to my dark and I'm going to come into here, I'm putting the dark into the whole eye. So two different ways to do this. Now, if I come into the, this is the blender pen, just the clear blender. And if I come into this and I use that now, I'm going to lift out This will bleach out a highlight in here. So if you're thinking about doing fabrics and clothing and what have you, this is the way you might decide that you want to do your highlights on your fabric. 
So that's also an option, okay? So that will lift out a lighter area for you. I prefer that way personally. It's entirely up to you. With this back here, just to um, use that technique and to show you a little more, if I go for the grey, the number four, the mid-tone, and I put some of that on his back here, and I want to fade his back out into the distance, then I would use my blender pen and I would get hold of that colour and again, work it. So you, do, you do have to come into this and, and nudge and budge and smudge it. And you'll find that you can fade that out quite a bit. So that it's paler off the paper. I've got quite a hard line there. Let's see if I can do anything about that. There you go. So just come in and work it with your blender pen. And you'll find that when that's dry and the darkness from the um, blender has gone away, that will fade out. And it's a good way to, to smooth things out. The hair, we paint in the same way. We're going to start with the paler colour and then we'll add our darks. So the same way, come up, fill in the hair. Come in, lock it in. There we are. In. I'll be as careful as I can be with this particular plait because I don't really want that all to bleed too much. Up and over here. There we are. I mean, obviously, you're going to be a lot more careful than I am. You're going to be have time to to do this properly. I'm on time constraints because I'm assuming that you all fancy your lunch soon, so I can't go on too long. <laughs> there we go, so round there. If you want to leave little white areas, do, because that will give you some of the highlights, which is quite fun. And then through and round here. This one. And if you want to, you can use this pen to put individual hairs out into the white sky behind us, so that's doable too. But for that, same applies. Hold it in your hand, go for your next colours. So we're looking at, that's 206, but I've got some lovely browns here I wanted to show you. So I've got 816 and 810, which is the darker one of the two. Let's have a, oh that's very dark. So that mine, never mind, let's have a play with it. Let's see what we can do. So I'm coming in there. That's on top of this. So this is darker. Simple as that. That is on top of this. So that is darker. That on top of this. So that down there is darker. Like that. This is all on top of this. So one of those edges has to have a dark edge. This is behind that, so therefore, that would be dark through there. This plait is underneath this piece of hair, so that would be dark. There we go. This is all right. That might be dark as it comes down and round there, like that. Where it narrows, it would be thicker and darker, so we could make that a little bit darker in there. Where it's close to this, it might be dark there, and the same applies here. And then we're going to think about this. We could perhaps put some lines up here. Follow the line of the hair. Follow the way it works to make it make sense. And then we use the lighter colour again to go back in and to blend. So same applies. Come in and blend. There we go. You see you can be quite rough with the paper so this is why you want to be using the right kind of equipment. 
Oh, trust me. I, having painted most of my life, I used some cheap paints and some bits and pieces, and you can't understand why you can't get the effect that you want. And you know, it's not always you. That saying about the bad work will always blame these tools, it's not always true, trust me. It's not always true. And this I'm going to use the whole of the brush to come back in and to scrub at this, to soften it. You see, if I do that and go over the dark, it fades it out. It bleeds it out so that it dries a lot paler. It pushes it back. That will probably mark, so I'm going to come back in, do that. Okay. And down the plat, what we want to do down the plat is just have a little bit of a logical think about what's on top of what and what goes underneath what. And a very easy way for me to say this to you is dark in the corners, like that, all the way down here, like this, okay? And then on the other side as well, we're going to do the same. The light's coming from up here, and then you're going to have dark on all the bits that are tucked underneath. So I'm imagining that these are coming out from underneath these pieces. All right, so if we do that, that will give us a good layering, a good idea of layering. All right, so down here again, blend. Ooh, that's of nails on blackboard noise, isn't it? Thousand apologies for all those people who are grinding their teeth at the moment. I'm sure I'm not depressed so hard. Make so much noise. Oh dear, thousand apologies. There we go. And that will give us a bit of layering on our plait, like that. Shh, be quiet, be quiet. So you see suddenly that's, that, that tucks in and, and, and works, doesn't it? You could do more to that if you wanted to, but I've given you the basic idea. With his um, horn, again, I want a very pale colour to start with, this pale, pale yellow. And I want to come up here, just gently, gently run that through. So that's, always start with a highlight with things like this because you can go darker, but it's a dickens of a job if you want to go lighter, you just can't do it. Whilst I've got the colour in my hand, I'm going to whiz that through there. And then having had that, we need to go to a darker colour now because we're going to introduce that around the edge of the flower, the edge of that centre, in under there because that will be dark because it's down underneath and behind and looking at the plait and thinking about the plait where each piece of the horn is on top of the one behind, underneath, you need the shadow. So in, under there, under there. smaller as we go up to the top and then you're going to use this pen to blend those just blend that edge try to be a bit careful with the black there we are. and then that will give us the the curve on the horn which is perfect and if i just come in and i whiz that in the just go around like that. There we go. And then that gives us a bit of shading there. You can use your blending pen if you want to, to come along these edges and to lift colour out. And that will give you a highlight along there. So you can do that too. That will work, but by the time it's dried, I think you will be gone today, so I'm a bit reluctant to um, waste your time doing that. But you can come along there and add a highlight. And the flower will be all the palest colour to start with. This pale pink. And then we're going to go in on top and just add a bit of shading to that too. 
it's the shading that makes it, isn't it? I mean, it's the shading that gives you the shape and the form which makes it look exciting. And all we want to do here is that ear is on top of the flower, so we would have shadow. The horn is on top of the flower there, so we would have shadow. And then each petal, that one is on top of this one, this one is on top of this one. And I use the little nib to come in and just soften that. And that will give us some idea of shading. There we go. Right. And all we've got to do now is take our greens. So any greens will do. A light and a dark would be nice, I think. And I want to just come in here and the, the fern that's on his head is a simple technique just using the shape of the nib. And I'm just going to come through here. And I'm going to use the whole shape of the nib to give myself and, and, and move the pen so that it follows the trajectory of the fern, of the stem, the stalk. As we get to the tip, just use the tip of the pen and you get this lovely shape. So I want to come through there, it will be close together there because they're all snubbed up and folded over. So there's that. And this is it. And if you want to, you can use the other pen too for a difference in colour. So that's doable. Tip, 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 tip. There you go. This is on the light side, so we could use the lighter pen here. Light coming down from above. So we can come through and round. Now we're starting to dip, so I want the, the petals, the leaves, to follow a touch of gravity there, look drooping. And then we'll use the darker one underneath, over the mane, like so. But that's an easy way, very, very easy way to um, create ferns and, and leaves. You don't need to be drawing every single petal and, and leaf individually if you don't want to. So that one, I'm just going to do that to make it look more interesting. This one's underneath, so this would be darker again. And just like palm trees, that would start to hang down like that. Smaller as we get out towards the outer edge. Be careful when you get to the edge of a page because we've all got this horrible tendency to go off the page. And if you do produce something that's really good and you want to frame it, that suddenly becomes a problem because it won't go in under the mount. So it's just worth thinking about. Smaller, smaller, smaller. And maybe these are flopped over to hang the other side. So that's potential too, isn't it? And finally, we want to come in here and we would be using the thin edge of our pen, the thin nib, and somebody has been chewing the flowers from the garden. Hmm. There we go. Somebody's been doing that in my garden. I tell you, I think I've had deer in the garden. My um, step over apple trees and um, my beetroot, the tops of my beetroot have been chewed. And it's all at a very high level, so it's absolutely not something small. So it's either got to be a fox or deer. So it's all very nice and all that, but please can you go and chew things that don't matter? I don't want you chewing me flowers and my things that I want to eat. So there you go, look at that. So we've got that. So the next thing we're going to do here is just take my dark brown this dark brown and I want to come in here and there you go oh I've got my husband outside yakking now you get it all here you know everybody so there you go so now we can come through here and if we add 
a few of these little lines to give us hair. That will give us that. And it breaks up this hard edge, this hard line. So if we do some of that, okay, we can do that. And this, this blank area here, which isn't very nice. So just put some lines down there like that. And you've got these lovely hairs. But I, now, having said that, everybody, suddenly, suddenly, that all becomes to me quite feminine. It's not a fella anymore. So if I take my black pen, I'm just using black here. You could use your Sharpie. I'm going to come from the eyelids and I'm going to just do a bit of that. And suddenly from here, it changes the whole thing. And there, ladies and gentlemen, for your delectation, you have a unicorn, a Sharon Hurst unicorn. Um, I'm assuming that um, questions you've been asking them whilst you've been working your way through. Um, you're asking if alcohol pens work on fabric. Yes, they do. Um, you'll find that they work very well and they should be machine washable. I've, I put it this way, when I've used them um, mistakenly on my fabric, um, I can't get them off. So therefore I would say to you for sure, um, use them on fabric and I think you'll be quite pleased. I've used them on silk painting and that's, that's super. Thank you, Jean. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I hope you have too. Uh, I'm sorry if I've wobbled the table a little bit and I'm aware that I whizzed through at the end. I didn't want to keep you too long when you're obviously thinking about lunch, so many people. But thank you so much for joining me today. I've been thrilled to bits to see you. Um, I'm leaving that there rather than you seeing me just so that you can have a, a good look at it and um, take note. If you need anything and you need any advice and you need any help, please email us, leave messages, because we would be absolutely delighted to answer your questions. And I will go back through all the comments and make sure I answer anything if anybody's having trouble with um, and needs ideas um, and has left me questions. And it's been absolutely delightful to talk to you. Ca pens on canvas board, yes. These pens you'll find will work on probably almost anything. Um, they're, they're permanent and they're, they're pretty good for all sorts of crafting um, uses. They'll work on acetate as well. I'd love to do a unicorn um, workshop. Yes, please, Elaine, that would be lovely. So with everybody's chuffed to bits that you've enjoyed the demo, thank you very much. Come back again. And if it's of any interest to you, we were thinking that maybe we'd do a question and answer session one day. Um, we'd love to see you again for that. So keep tuned. Like Search Press, please, the Arts and Crafts books, because then that will keep you completely and utterly up to date. Please come and like me on Sharon Hurst Art and that will keep you up to date with anything I'm doing. And hopefully with those two things in your back pocket, you won't miss a thing. So I love being with you today. Thank you so much. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye.